Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a problem from the 2039 IMO shortlist, problem number G2. I suggest you try this problem out for a minimum of half an hour, ideally an hour and a half, but not more than two and a half hours. If on the other hand you'd like to go along with us, I suggest you draw the diagram and put your first ideas out on paper for the next 15 minutes. So now, without further ado, let's begin. So the first thing to do with this problem is, you see we have, we have a, a couple of points here. So the first thing we do is we draw the circumcircle points M, N, and T. And now the next thing is we need to take the intersection of this circumcircle of A, M, T with the bisector of side A, C and symmetrically on the other side. So now before we do that, notice that what do we know about this triangle, these two triangles like a M T and A N T, like they don't seem very well known, at least not to me. So now before we go any deeper, I invite you to take five minutes and see what we have in this picture. And here's what we have. And the answer is really not much. We know that T B is T C. I, as of now, don't know how to connect these lines. So these points, so let's push the problem further. So we have X and Y are these intersections. So X is on this circumcircle around, right? It's around the circumcircle of A, M, T. And Y is on the circumcircle around A, N, T. Okay, so here's X. We know that this angle right here is 180 minus alpha half. And what else do we know? We know, yeah, we have this Y right here. This angle that is also 180 minus alpha half. So now we have these two angles are equal. And we need to prove that like once we, we need to connect X and Y somehow. And then we need to prove that once we connect them, intersect them with MN, that we'll have if that point is called K, then KA will be KT, i.e. that this perpendicular by that the bisector of side AT. So if I take normal from O here, and O is the circumcenter, it, it seems natural to me just like put it in because it's how we define these points y and x and these are 90 degree angles so that might be useful somehow maybe not but we'll see and with that now here i invite you to pause for another you know 10 15 minutes and try to push the problem further explore a bit see what you see and decide if you want to push it further or try to solve it backwards see what would hold if once you intersected this K A was K T, what would hold in that case, or just push it forward. And for me, the thing is, let's push it forward a bit. Let's calculate some angles before we see what else we have here. So now let's do that. And once you calculate the angles, you get this is gamma, beta. You have this is gamma because this is 90. This is 90 because O T is the bisector of B C. And that's why you get this angle. X O T is equal to 180 minus T-O-N, which is 180 minus gamma, so this is gamma. In a similar way, this is beta. And now an interesting thing comes up, which is, you see, once you put this sort of, looking at it backwards, how I would solve it, is like, what does it mean for us to have the intersection of this be K and have K is KT? That just literally to me means that K, O, and this point are collinear. And my question is, like I was hinting at a point, well, maybe these four are concyclic. Could it be that the others are, that these four are concyclic and these four are concyclic? Could that be a thing? It's a hunch that I wanted to explore. And now calculating, calculating the angles, there is something interesting happening here. There is alpha half, alpha half, gamma, gamma, mx. Do you see anything with this? I invite you to take five, 10 minutes and push it further. Maybe try to see if you notice anything. Are these in fact concyclic? Like what would it mean for these to be concyclic? If these points are concyclic, then would that, well, maybe in that case as well, T is also on the circumcircle as well. Like what, are, what is the hunch? And if that's the case, and this is also just from a diagram, you see, like, this looks 90 to me. Might not, might be, might not be. Take five minutes and try to push it further. And here's what I get. So for me, the thing is, we have this, here's alpha half, alpha half. If I took a point, 
So yeah, I reflected, mind you, if this was 90, well, we, have, we would have this triangle and this triangle would be similar. And in that case, we'd have, and we'd have OT is OA. So they would be not just similar, but they would be congruent. And then we would have a lot of things. We'd have OX is OM and then OY is ON. And then that can also give us something for, I mean, that actually gives us, because this is the intersection of diagonals, that gives us this is a trapezoid, yes, that and y is parallel to mx. Now, the simplest way of actually proving this is the case is to take a point x prime such that ox prime is equal to om, and that's, let's say, mx is parallel to at. Now, what does this mean? Well, this means that if I take this point, let's call it here, x prime, this means that also we have, because O is equidistant from A and T, M and X prime are equidistant from O. So that means that X prime and M, like M A and X prime T are equal. So we have that X prime T is equal to M A. And now with that, we also have, we angle chase here. We have this is alpha half, so this X prime point is an element of on because if this is alpha half, once we translate it, we would have that this angle also needs to be alpha half. So that also holds true for x prime. And now is there, are there many points which define this? So how do we have x prime? We have that x prime t is ma. Maybe we need to calculate x prime o. Let's see, what do we need here? Oh yes, we need it just to be on the circumcircle around A, M, T, which is true because it's a reflection over this line because this is an isosceles trapezoid. So that means X prime is congruent to X. And in a similar way, we would have Y prime is congruent to Y. In other words, we would have that the angle O, X, T is equal to the angle O, Y, T is equal to 90 degrees. And this is also equal to, call this point, this perpendicular P, which is also equal to the angle OPT. And now we have these four, well, these actually one, two, three, four, five lie on the same circle. These five lie on the same circle. And now it's only, we only need to prove that X, Y, M, N lie on the same circle. And that is true, Y, well, because O, Y is O, N. OX is OM, so OM times OY is ON times OX, which means these four are concyclic as well. Mind you, O is the intersection of the diagonals of this quadrilateral. And now because all of these are in the circle, that means their radical axes meet at the same point K. And now given that K is on the perpendicular bisector of AT, K, O, P are collinear. That means that K, A is equal to K, T, and that solves the problem. And now, you know, let's take 15, 10 minutes and try to write up a solution. So the first thing we do is we say take X prime to have these two properties, and then we get that X prime is in fact X. And we do analogously for Y, and then we move on to our second claim, which is we prove that now given O, T is O, A, O, X is O, M, and the angle TOX is equal to gamma, which is AOM. We have a congruency, and now from this congruency, we get that the angle OXT is 90, and similarly OYT is 90. And now due to OYT is OXT is OPT is 90, we have that OPYTX are all concyclic. And with this, we move on to our third and final claim, which is we find the final four concyclic points, and now due to the radical axis theorem on these three circles, we have M, N, X, Y, and P are concurrent at K, and now because K, P, T is K, P, A is 90, and P, A is P, T, we have K, T is K, A, and this solves our problem. And as always, thanks for problem solving.